Welcome to the Spotlight segment. This is a segment dedicated to interviews of developers or interesting happenings in the world of Android. And now for this episode, here's your Spotlight. And in the first of our Spotlight items this week, I'm delighted to say we are joined by the developers of a new gaming platform uh, out of Estonia called Audio Cat. I know lots of you are uh, gamers, and this is probably an underserved area of our podcast because none of us are massive gamers, I don't think. So I'm delighted to say that Annette and Henry are here to tell us about their very exciting uh, new platform. Um, Annette, can I hand over to you and and, and you tell us about what you're doing? Yeah, sure. Um, Well, I thought you got, we like to say that we are uh, developing a fully accessible audio game platform. Um, people right now in Estonia at least like to call us uh, Spotify for games or uh, even audio-based uh, Roblox um, because right now indeed we are just developing uh, the platform and also some games on it uh, but next year we have this kind of big plan that we will develop a framework that meaning the community itself will develop the games and we will just keep the platform in order and uh, do no longer a game development. So it's going to be a full-on platform and in the end also like development platform for the community. And what made you get into this? What what made you decide to start doing this? Uh, actually, it was, I think... Uh, 2020, when we started our game development journey, uh, we were both starting to be software engineers and uh, we started just, uh, let's say, normal game development. And uh, in 2022, just in the beginning, we had the TEDx event uh, at our town in our city. And there one uh, woman called uh, Pira Taus, uh, who is uh, like the one of the greatest activists of accessibility in Estonia. She has made our big song festival and dance festival accessible to the blind community and deaf community. And she gave a speech there about accessibility. And I was literally so inspired that later I just went up to her. I said, sorry, I have a question. How do blind people play? And uh, just there we started the conversation. I got the contact with like Estonian Blind Union President Jakob Rosin, and we started the conversation. And like they say, rest is kind of a nice history for us. Excellent. So I know that you are kind of in a pre-launch phase, aren't you? And um, mm-hmm. folks can sign up. C- can you tell us a little bit about the platform when it launched? If I if I log on to it, what what will I see on the platform? What what does it what does it look and feel like? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, right now we are indeed in the pre-sale phase, and we are uh, launching in May. We really want to launch in first of May, like we promised, but. Um, Apple is sadly giving us a very, very hard time. And uh, that means that we most likely need to postpone a little bit the launch because we can't uh, launch on Apple since we don't have the permission still. And But uh, basically, when you uh, open the application, uh, you will be welcome to the application. Uh, then you can uh, create the account manually or use your uh, Google account to just uh, log in. And then you will be greeted by your very own personal virtual companion. Uh, right now, it is a cat and it has a backstory that it's from outer space and it's here to spread happiness. But uh, and with that companion, you can chat, you can feed it, and in the end, you can buy every sort of accessories from in-game store and also like in the end change, like it doesn't have to be a cat anymore. I know that community has asked for werewolves and unicorns and swans and whatnot. So it, it can get quite crazy in then. And with that same companion, you can go in like to the audio games adventures. Uh, right now we are launching with uh, at least two. Uh, one is Wordy. Um, it's like um, a, a word game, like uh, in Estonia, we like to call it alias basically you have given an explanation and you need to guess the word we thought it's gonna be quite easy game but we have seen that it's it can be quite difficult and uh, the second one is called echoes of valor 
uh, which is uh, more of a mix of a platformer and RPG. It has elements from both. And um, it's kind of like adventurous game where you have the battle moments and then you have like some scrying and like, like the main story is, for example, 25 levels. And after that, you can play indefinitely. But like, we don't know at what point the game gets unbeatable. That's a mystery that the players need to discover, basically. And what and what what's the companion doing in something like Echoes of Valor? Like who's playing the game? Is is the companion kind of the figure you're moving around on the screen or what what what's that about? The companion is the main character basically on all of our games, uh in the beginning at least. And in Echoes of Valor also the companion just goes to this adventure. And you need to guide your companion uh, either like to like actually actually do the scrying, which is um, audio cue based game. Like you need to match the audio sequence, or you need to jump over obstacles. There are different like certain types of uh, difficulty jumping. It's not only just like jump and that's done. There's different interactions, and then there is turn based battle where your uh, companion meets an enemy, and then you have a choice basically do you run away and like try to escape, or do you go full on into combat and uh, pray for your best that you win? Yeah, so, so, it, so it's more than an avatar, is it? It sounds like it's got slightly more of a life of its own than an avatar might have. Yeah, I, I would say so, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Henry, are you a developer as well? How did you how did you get involved in this? So yes, I'm a developer as well, and I got involved with this basically because me and Donetta live together. We're roommates, and we've been on this uh, fun journey the whole time together. Excellent. And what, uh, if if you can tell us, what 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 games might you have planned in the future? You've obviously got you've got your work game. Sort of sounds like a crossword without the grid, from what you're saying. Uh, and you've got Echoes of Valor. What 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 might be in the pipeline? Well, uh, we actually really want to launch with three games, but uh, since like yeah, like I said, Apple is giving us hard time, and we're focusing all on energy on that right now. Then the third game will be launched with an update it's gonna be a, like a retro game uh vibe little bit and um uh it's basically a take on the let's say amazing retro game called uh, frogger where like you need to uh, jump over the street when the cars are coming with a frog but we're gonna t- do it like more of a companion style and uh, maybe add a little bit more difficulty to it and then there is also like for myself, uh, since me and Henry are quite big gamers, uh, we like the Henry likes more building games. I like more of uh, like adventure, open world games. I love open world games, so they are also like uh, in the pipeline. I want something like with an open world, and Henry wants something more like um, building and like creating like maybe Sims based something because Henry is a big Sims fan. So something like that. And I have to add that next year we have a really amazing partnership coming. In Estonia, here is one very cool company called Seven Cents. They're basically right now developing this kind of device, which is a haptic device. And that basically will help blind people see. I have tried that device on myself. And uh, basically you can feel people moving uh, like the different uh, speed in the room and you can feel the objects and like you can even catch things while they're flying basically. It, it's amazing and we talked about the partnership uh, in possibility to doing like Oculus for the blind people. So uh, like right now we have this Oculus that uh, like is all visual and I even can't play it because I have very bad motion sickness. But you basically put that on your head and you can play games. And we had a like, cool idea that you can do like Call of Duty or something like shooting game even. So like very, very cool projects coming next year also. That sounds really good. I mean, from, from my perspective, as someone who doesn't play a lot of games, although Blind Drive is amazing. I've just got to say, mm-hmm. no one played that. You should play Blind Drive. Uh, but that aside, um, where I think the blindness market 
I was going to say underserved, but I won't. I'll be more radical than that. Not served at all is in any sorts of sports simulation games. So there's no there's no football or soccer game for the blind. There's no there's no golf game. No no no, no any sort of sports whatsoever. No one does that apart from a guy who made some games with DOS in about 1990 and kind of mm-hmm. ported them to Windows. There's literally nothing. Whereas there probably are fantasy rpgs other ones so mm-hmm. i don't know but whether that, whether that's an interesting le- well not niche market but gap in the market you might consider exploring yeah that is actually uh, i have been written personally and asked about the football game i have uh, played like way back in the day i played a lot of on like ps4 ps3 i think even i played fifa and uh, games like that and football manager so i think it would be quite fun challenge to design something like that just audio based and uh yeah so this would be a challenge for me definitely and i think that would take like some weeks for me to design because uh i just don't want it to be something random i want it like to be something cool and little bit yeah. a lot like just so easy you know because most of the games that i have played like in audio based i feel they're kind of like easy and like also some community members have said to me it's like it feels like the developers think that the blind people are dumb you know and i, I kind of have to agree with some points because like i have seen uh blind people using uh, their like technological devices and they're pretty good you know they're good than most of the sighted people i know so i wouldn't do the games just like just so easy i would add some difficulty so they're actually like enjoyable you know because the difficulty in some sense brings the like the enjoyment and fun into it yeah for sure but but like you, you know what i mean i mean I'm, I'm sure you'll do it amazingly well and better than anyone who's done it before but there you know there are word games there are fantasy rpg games they exist yeah. whereas sport games they literally don't there, there isn't one so mm-hmm. uh it might be it might be a gap in the market to exploit if that's what you uh, wanted to do yeah, yeah, that's, ha- that's that's something definitely, yeah, because uh, we have a little bit of a gap in June, basically, because we haven't put there anything to, like, be developed. So uh, uh, since I have gotten quite many requests, like, to a football game, so I think that's something I'm willing to explore and try since uh, I am a big football fan uh, and have been for a, a very long time since my grandma taught me all the rules and su- stuff like that. So I think that would be something I, I would be willing to try indeed, yeah. Excellent. That would be really good. Well, uh, Ed, I think you've asked all the great questions that I was thinking of. Now, but I do want to ask one question. Now, is this going to be like a multi-platform or is it something that I access via browser or is it uh, something that, say, if I'm on Android, I have an Android app, or, you know, Windows, I have a Windows app, or is it something that will be accessed via the browser? So currently, yeah, we're developing for Android and Apple, the platforms. However, we do see a potential in the future to have also something for the PC, because what we're doing is making a platform where we can get different games together and that can be enjoyed by uh, people with uh, wide ranges of games they're interested in. Excellent. Uh, I'm glad, though, that you guys have Android on there because uh, that's my concern. <laughs> no, I know I'm not a gamer, just like Ed says. Uh, not a lot of us on here are gamers. But there was one game that I used to like, and I wish that people could give you the uh, license to it. That thing was called uh, Audio Archery. I, I don't know. It would be nice to see uh, you guys incorporate that or integrate that into your uh, platform because that has been the one game that I've ever played on Android, and I'd love to be able to play that game again. Just absolutely beautiful. That would be literally dead simple. It would take you about a minute and a half to recreate if you wanted to. It was it was fun. It was not complicated, though. I'm sure you could uh, almost write that as we were interviewing you. Audio archery, but it was, it was good fun. So, if you did want to bring that to your repertoire, I don't think it would take you very long. 
Yeah, that that that's an actually a good suggestion. We we are taking all the suggestions in and basically writing writing everything down and uh, seeing as we go because. Right now, yes, we are also, of course, bringing it also to the Android. And uh, as we have seen, Android is much easier to develop than Apple. Apple has so many restraints and like everything like causing trouble. Android is so much easier and so much simpler, basically. So, uh, but the game suggestion, yeah, that's amazing. We need to research that and why not? Yeah, and and, and while you're at it, uh, Annette, uh, also bring us a bowling game. You know that would be nice. <laughs> that's oh. one of the things I like to do. You go bowling, you know. <laughs> okay, Th that's that's actually yeah, that's a good idea. I haven't like but, but actually it, played the bowling. No, I have played bowling game on Wii though. Yeah, I have long time ago. Yeah. So so there was an iOS game for this, and and they didn't do very well. It was called the, the Blindfold Games. They did a blindfold bowling game, except okay. the problem they had, they they had a randomizer as to which skittles went down. So you, so, so they lined you up where you bowled the ball, and let's say you threw it down the left hand channel, they would say that skittles, are like pins one, nine, and ten went down, which mm -hmm. obviously wouldn't actually happen if you were bowling, like it couldn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it can't it can't hit the one on the left and then the two on the right go down. So um, if you do that, just make sure it's realistic in terms of which pins go. But blindfold bowling, <laughs> if you want to have a look at what's already out there, uh, would be one. I think they fixed that. Actually, uh, people complained that it was a bit odd. Okay, uh, that's only on iOS, as far as I know. Though I don't believe it is on Android. Okay, uh, it was in my pre pre Android days that I played that. So I take it, Ed, that you don't consider bowling a sport because you said <laughs> this has it's been not. not only underserved but not served. So it's not that a sport. means you don't consider it, it a sport. It's okay. Not a sport. No. Okay. No, it's not. It's a pub game. You think it's not a sport? <laughs> no, it's a bar I think, game. It's, I think bowlers would it? disagree with you, but so, I do agree. Here, with I don't care. I'll go. I'll go and talk to all the bowlers, <laughs> and I'll bring a glass bottle with me, and I'll smash it. And take them and it, it's not, it's not Here's sport. what happened, and ladies, forgive me, but I used to think that hey, you know, bowling is for you know women and stuff like that. And then you know, my wife took me, and I fell in love with the damn thing. Uh, excuse my yeah. <laughs> it's not a sport, though. <laughs> Just isn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but golf is. Yeah, golf's a sport. Okay. okay. So what will be the price model of the platform? Will it be free or any paid price model? Uh, yeah, uh, the price model. Basically, uh, well, right now we're doing a pre-sale when people can buy, buy basically in like a discounted rate at three month month access. But it's going to be subscription based since we are adding uh, new games every month. And in the end also like, when the community starts developing, it's going to be every month new games and even more after each month. So um, to also like basically make the audio cat live like for its own money, because right now we're everything. We're just paying everything and paying every bill for out of our own pocket. So it's going to be subscription based. Uh, it's uh, 7.99 euros. I don't know if like dollars or other, other currencies, I don't know the price, but like since we calculate everything in euros, it's seven ninety nine, and every other calculation usually the computer does for us. And that's seven ninety nine a month, a quarter. What's that? This is a uh, monthly, uh, okay. monthly, monthly rate. Yeah, but we have like offers like also quarterly and six months and twelve months, which is going like basically fifteen percent cheaper or so on. So if people want longer time access uh, for a cheaper price. So it's uh, it's also an option, but uh, uh, yes, seven ninety nine a month euros. You mentioned earlier that the that Apple was giving you a hard time in the App Store. Mm -hmm. Does does that mean it's coming to Android first? <laughs> you're, you're not uh, yeah, making yeah, yeah. Android it's, people it, wait, it, are you? Uh, it seems so that it's coming to Android first, yeah, and Apple people need to wait a uh, little longer. We don't want to like basically punish the Android people because Apple is not working with us. So uh, it seems so that it's coming to uh, Android first and Apple people 
just need to wait a little bit until we get some sort of answer from them. All right. Sounds good. That, then, that, then, was, then, a, that was the right answer, Aneta. Yeah. Well <laughs> you, know, you know where you are. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we or don't you, want you, Android Android folks getting punished because uh, uh, I call them the fruit veilers. You know, I don't want us getting punished because fruit veil is not allowing you to get in that veil. <laughs> uh, so please don't delay Android on grounds of this. <laughs> yeah. It actually really needs to go to Apple office and give them a smack on the head that get to work because there's so much developers who want to develop and Apple is taking away the opportunity to develop because they refuse to answer within the time frame they promise. And that has been the main drawback. Uh, we are spamming them to get an answer. Yeah, basically we like they wrote us basically three, uh, three weeks ago that uh, we are going to contact you soon. The soon oh, is boy. still like uh, the soon is still I don't know when is the soon. And then they keep spamming <laughs> all of the email accounts we find every day with new letters and new emails, and it's still soon. So we are waiting for soon to happen. Yeah, it's like tomorrow, isn't it? You never, you never get tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, basically, and uh, yeah, uh, Apple, Apple is uh, very complicated, and I have read a lot of posts that developers say that if. Steve Jobs wasn't dead already, they would kill him personally. So people are very angry. <laughs> Developers are really angry at uh, Apple. <laughs> How inconsiderate that he died before people could kill him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Warren, I think you had a question before. John. Yes, I do. And uh, frankly, so I was thinking about this uh, audio cat network and I'm like, it's got to be a girl that would come up with something uh, relating to uh, the cat. Cause I'm, I'm looking at my little girl. She's so much into cats and I don't think Henry would have chosen audio cat. Uh, and then did you choose that name <laughs> or that title? I'm just kind of curious. Actually it was more Henry because uh, the game we were developing before was called Leo. Uh, after my, my cat, yeah. Uh, Leonardo who's called uh, Leo. And, um, I, I, I don't like to call him much that because he's not being officially diagnosed, but I am kind of afraid that he is a little bit visually impaired because he bumps into everything all the time and falls uh -huh. down places and he's not like the best with his vision. And uh, we thought that, wait, but Leo has a very good hearing, like very good hearing. He hears all the time when I call him. So we thought like audio and cat because Leo has like, trouble seeing but his hearing is like awesome so it's like oh you got that must suit and i think in the end, end henry was that who uh, generate the name because i was like i can't think of a name i literally can't think of a name because i'm gonna be stuck with the name forever so i can't choose something and be like okay that's forever thing the actual story is that the, what happened was we were sitting behind the computer in estonia you can make a business like very simple uh through the internet and we were sitting at the name box for like an hour and just thinking. And uh, and yeah, that's like, it was kind of a team effort in a way because we were like, okay, oh, the cat sounds like it. And it also ended up working out well because we're now partnering with uh, our friends who have a dog company. So cats and dogs are friends now. And it's kind of like a collaboration brand in a way. Yeah, yeah, we, we are partnering with a company called Movemates who are working basically Tinder for dogs, like for friendship purposes, of course. So now, now we agreed that uh, cats and dogs are friends. So like uh, we are the cat ones and uh, he's the dog one. So it, it worked out perfectly then. That's great. I like the story. Uh, it's a beautiful story. And uh, it's interesting, though, that some animal may have some vision problem but then they of course use the other sense uh, the hearing mm -hmm. and that's absolutely beautiful so i can see why this thing should be called the audio cat that's absolutely beautiful so uh i want to know how do people can keep contact with you how they can reach out to you if they have any suggestions because the community are full of ideas full of game mm -hmm. ideas and mm -hmm. how they can reach out to you well basically 
yeah, Henry put also the email there, uh, which people can use. And we have Facebook, we have Instagram, um, we have LinkedIn, if somebody uses that. So from there, people can reach out. And also, like, if they basically subscribe to our wait list, which is on our website, and you can also tag that. So then there's also, we send out uh, basically our emails with every update or newsletter so people can easily take contact with us and we are we are quite available i would say henry is not uh, mostly available because he doesn't check his messages never it's very hard <laughs> even it's even very hard for me to get into contact with him but i check at like at least like three times an hour i check my email and i check my social media accounts because i know that somebody wants to reach me from somewhere so i am quite available and ready like to answer most days yeah, you, you were pretty quick when uh, we were messaging about you appearing on here. Uh, you, you were pretty responsive. And, and you just won a business award, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, we went uh, on 16th of April. Actually, it's a busy week. Just yesterday, we uh, I, we got back from Riga. It was a big startup event called TechChill. But before that, in Tallinn, there was a Melt Innovation Forum where there was a competition, Creative Business Cup Estonia Finals, and we won. That means um, second or third of June, there is um, Creative Business Cup Global in Copenhagen with uh, 80 plus countries competing, and we are representing Estonia with our Brilliant. Congratulations. That's absolutely beautiful. And, you know, like people can just go to audiocat.com right so sign up for the waiting list out there it's uh it's actually audiocat app and you put it also in chat it's audiocatapp.com okay so people can yeah sign up and uh, we right now we send out uh, news uh, newsletters or, or update letters as i like to call them basically twice a week but uh, starting me, one very amazing guy uh, who is also the founder of the World is Accessible Facebook group in Facebook, uh, Anthony, uh, is taking over our newsletter and uh, our most of the social media. Uh, and uh, he's like very big on all the accessibility topics and like he's been amazing. And now he's a little bit helping us because I am kind of running out of time with everything, so uh, I'm trying to still be available, but he's taking a little bit of work uh, off me, but he's absolutely amazing and always responding also, and if he needs anything, he's asking me, and like everything is uh, in cooperation and everything is fine. That's really good. Uh, and for you guys, is this is this all you do, or is, do you have like other projects that you're doing in your mainstream software development lives? How, how does AudioCat fit for you? Well, for me, AudioCat is full time because, uh, like my aunt, uh, like some years ago, said uh, said to me, "Excuse my language, but I'm very shit uh, like uh, worker or employee. I can't handle the clock." Uh, to, like going at like seven uh, and like finishing at five I can't handle that uh, I I need to be my own boss I need to yeah. work for myself I work best then I work most productive and I can't handle basically taking orders because I will find a mistake and I'm gonna say the mistake straight forward to the person and usually my never my bosses have liked my straightforward approach so far so I am better off with AudioCat, but Henry is not full-time AudioCat, he can say. Uh, I work a full-time job, and then I'm part-time AudioCat. And uh, and me and Anita are also parents to our children. So <laughs> yeah, we have, like I said, we have uh, Leo, Leonardo, uh, our cat, and uh, we also have a dog who... Uh, she's uh, very, like, looking at me and waiting, like, can we go outside, please? So yeah, <laughs> she's, uh, she's trying to charm me right now to like go outside to a last walk of the day. I'm also very good uh, at gardening. Uh, I overwater my plants. Uh, Excellent. Yeah, Henry, Henry killed the cactus. <laughs> That's my brother. <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to water that. You're supposed to kind of leave it. <laughs> oh dear. 
it's a typical desert plant, right? Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere in Arizona or someplace like that. You gave it too much beer and it fell over and its liver fails. <laughs> yes. Well, guys, thank you so much. We we really appreciate you uh, guys for coming out and, you know, for Ed reaching out to you guys and you guys accepting to come out and talk to us. We've been thrilled and I'm um, looking forward to uh, seeing some games, especially, you know, that bowling game and the audio mm -hmm. archery or something similar uh, that you guys <laughs> could bring me back to uh, gaming again. Yeah, I actually wrote them down. So uh, we're going to try. I'm going to research all of this uh, tomorrow since today and uh, just trying to rest from all of this uh, uh, traveling that we did for four days. So yeah. tomorrow it's full on back work and then I can then I can see what we can do. So tell me something, guys, before you guys uh, leave. Would mm -hmm. you be willing to come back again sometime down the road, especially when you finally launch this and, you know, somewhere down the road sometime this year, would you be willing to come back again and talk about some of the things that have um, uh, changed yeah. or some you know, of things you're working on? Yeah, just uh, somebody shoot us a message and I will answer because Henry will probably most likely even see it. But uh, I, I will, I will answer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so yeah, much, Adina. Ed and Henry. We appreciate you guys uh, for responding to Ed and coming on uh, to chat with us today. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Uh, it's nice meeting you guys. Bye, guys.